Hello everybody, Jason of New Age Revolution Cave. Ah, uh, beautiful Wednesday to you. Here on the show, the big show, the program, if you will. Uh, we're changing things up a little bit. We're going to do uh, two shows today, possibly. Um, the, the the Nintendo show, I've got to I've got to switch up a little bit. I think I think um, it it appears that folks are more interested in games that are uncommon or you know not ones that are played often. Uh, so when I was doing things like, you know, Dark Man and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, people seem to be a little bit more interested in those videos than the videos of, you know, uh, Liam and I playing RBI baseball or, you know, if we did Contra or something like that. I, I don't I don't think those seem to get a lot of interest. So I might go back to playing um, just, you know, the games that that you don't play. You know, I, I have a massive pile of games that I've never even put in the system. Sometimes that results in me finding a game like Dark Man or Nightmare on Elm Street that I like. Uh, and then sometimes it's just bad and you watch me play for 15 minutes. So we'll see. Um, Liam and I are going to uh, tackle Super Mario 3 together. Uh, but I won't film that entire thing because I think that's like an hour playthrough, I think. And we're not going to play through it. But we'll we're gonna goof around with that. That's kind of our next. He's playing now. Uh, that's kind of our next obsession is uh, trying to get as far through Mario Three as we can. So we're probably gonna start doing that later. So later tonight I might play um, kind of a random game off the shelf. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. I don't even know if this the Hey Wanna Play Nintendo will stick around. It's not the most watched program, but we'll see. We'll see. So now I'm going to do uh, talk about some movies that I haven't seen before until now. As you know, I have this huge list of movies that I should have seen being a fan of the 80s. Uh, some of them have shocked you, uh, including Monster Squad that I haven't seen, but desperately looked for yesterday to no avail. Um, there's a lot of movies that I haven't seen. And they're movies that I should have seen. We're also going to talk about uh, a, a new movie interest of mine, uh, something that I've just discovered and really enjoy, especially down in the atmosphere of this room on a Sunday afternoon or, or whatever. I'll tell you about that in a minute, too. Uh, but the first movie that I should have seen that I have not seen until now, and I did finish it last week, uh, is Top Gun. I've had Top Gun sitting in my shelf forever. And then Maverick came out and everybody said how great Maverick was. And I was like, well, that's a good time to get Maverick and watch Top Gun for the first time. Uh, and I love it. I love Top Gun. Top Gun is actually uh, a fantastic action-packed, gripping, intense, edge-of-your-seat movie with one of the best soundtracks ever. I mean, I put the Top Gun soundtrack right up there with the Rocky IV soundtrack. I mean, it's so good. Um, I'll, never, I'll, never, I'll never skip over, uh, you know, Kenny Loggins again uh, when, when this song comes on. It's such a great soundtrack. So Top Gun, if... So the, these reviews are kind of going to be spoiler-ish because, come on, most of you have already seen these movies. But Top Gun is about the uh, the greatest uh, pilots uh, in the in the U.S. in the world, maybe uh, gathering together to you know complete these almost suicide missions. Um, the best of the best, the elite, become Top Guns. That's their that's their name, the Top Guns. And uh, there's there's so many, uh, you know, modern, not modern, but pop culture references that that I didn't, I, I've said and didn't know where they came from. Uh, the number one being uh, Talk to Me Goose. Uh, I have said Talk to Me Goose quite frequently in life. Uh, when I sit, even, even when I sit down with a patient, 
if it's a closer patient that I've known for a while, they go, oh, I'm having a bad day. I go, talk to me, Goose. And uh, I never knew why I said that. I never had any idea why I said that. I think I knew it was from a movie. I think I knew it was Top Gun because what other movie is Goose in? But I didn't know why I said it. I never had seen the scene. And now I know why you say, talk to me, Goose. Also didn't know that Goose dies in Top Gun. Had no idea. In fact, when, when the plane goes down or when, when, you know, when they have to eject and, you know, uh, Maverick is cradling old Goose in his hands in the water, I just figured, all right, you know, the next scene will be the infirmary and, you know, Goose is fine. No, no, Goose and his mustache are dead. And I had no idea that that, that that happened. No idea. No idea that Goose dies in Top Gun. Tom Cruise I've always been a fan of. And, and I like him before he was a, you know, worldwide icon, gazillionaire, you know, upper echelon elite. Um, I still like him, but I, I really like Top Gun, or Tom Cruise in this. I really like him in Risky Business. You know, I like him when he's just a kid and still has, you know, kind of jacked up teeth. Uh, I, I prefer him in that state. And he's fantastic. He's the most charming guy. I don't know. Look, in, in a completely... Uh, Top Gun... Or, I keep saying Top Gun. Tom Cruise is, is dreamy. I, I mean, really, he knows, how to, he knows how to just be dreamy. You know, and I say that he's the smile. He's constantly got this... this arrogant but sweet smile on his face this whole movie and I, I I'm just I'm enamored I, I he's he's just uh, he's great he's great he's he's got the he, he has the Jason Priestley effect on me uh, you know whatever whatever that means whatever it's all on the straight and narrow but Tom Cruise really kills it in this Kelly McGillis as the love interest uh, doesn't do it for me um in my mind, I thought, I, I think in my mind, I confused Kelly McGillis with uh, uh, Elizabeth Shue, you know, from Karate Kid. Um, I forgot who Kelly McGillis was. And again, I thought, I thought it was Elizabeth Shue. And so when I see Kelly McGillis, and she's a little older, and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think that that was, I, I didn't know who she was until you find out that there is no other girl coming. It's, it's Kelly McGillis. And I didn't, I didn't like I didn't like the pair. Um, I'm not, I wasn't, eh, I thought that she needed to be more. Whatever that means. Tom Cruise, Top Gun. Great movie. Haven't seen it until now. Now, I did start watching Maverick. Started watching Maverick because I, I suck at watching movies. I, my, my uh, attention span is so short. I'm so used to half hour segments of stuff that it's hard for me to sit down and watch a two-hour movie. Even the kids can't do it. We, you know, we start watching a movie the other night, Dungeons and Dragons we started watching, which is great. And it took us like two more nights to finish it because we just, you know, the attention span, the ability, it's, it's all of us. All of us are get jittery and, you know, we... So it's taken me a little while to watch Maverick. And it's good. It's fine. I, I'm sure, it, you know, it'll end, it'll end well, I'm sure. But... I would take this one all day over Maverick. And maybe it's because of the, you know, maybe I really just don't like anything modern. Maybe I just, you know, I think some of the, the co-stars of this movie, you know, the, the whole uh, flight team that's put together, I think I liked them more in the 80s. I think they were, they didn't, you know, irritate me as much as, as the 80s characters did. Uh, because some of the some of the guys and the girls in the in the modern movie, there's eh, you know I I don't know maybe I'm just so disheartened to anything today. I don't know, but Maverick's fine. But I'll take this one all day. I'll take the original Top Gun all day. Uh, being disheartened or disinterested in modern. Uh, uh, movies or actors or uh, co-stars or extras or themes or whatever. Liam just threw the Nintendo controller as he died on Mario 3. Uh, that segues into, now I'm going even further back in time to watch movies. 
and I'm finding myself very entertained and very relaxed and not frustrated about anything that I'm watching because I'm going back to the 30s, folks. I'm going back to the 30s to watch movies and this could become kind of my new thing. Will it replace 80s movies? No, but this is actually even... Well, 80s movies don't frustrate me at all, but these are easier to watch than any era of movie for me. Uh, these all came from that big VHS collection that I picked up for free off of Facebook. And the guy was in his 80s. And, you know, old people like old movies. You know, my game. Uh, so the first, I, I just, these were, these were total random go into the mini blockbuster, the, the, what is it? The block basement, basement buster. I forget. I think it's block basement. Yeah. Block basement video, go into block basement video and uh, just randomly pull a couple of these movies off the shelf. Liam is absolutely losing his mind because he's struggling on world one with Mario. We have been away from this game for so long that he is struggling. My expert gaming child is struggling with World 1 on Mario 3. Um, randomly grabbed two movies. And it started, a, it's, it started a whole new thing for me. So I watched... First I watched Boys Town. <laughs> first I watched Boys Town with somebody named Spencer Tracy. I don't know. And then another fella named Mickey Rooney. And uh, this is great. Boys Town is great. And I, I don't know the year. I think it, it's it's in the 30s. Uh, but Mickey Rooney, before he was adult actor Mickey Rooney, he was child actor Mickey Rooney. I kind of knew that, but I obviously had forgotten it. And he's fantastic. He's fantastic. And Boys Town is, is basically about a, um, uh, you know, a priest who wants to um, help underprivileged or homeless kids or, you know, kids with bad families, orphaned kids, whatever, and boys, and um, starts off with a few and then grows his his empire to, I think he's housing, you know, 100 or 200 boys at one time in in this facility, and he, and he takes care of them, and it's great. And uh, Mickey Rooney is a mobster's brother, and the mobster... Uh, you know, he has, Mickey Rooney has no family and, the, and his brother's a mobster wrapped up in a life of crime. And he actually goes to the priest and asks, the brother asks the priest to take in his brother, take care of his brother, because he doesn't want him getting caught up in this life of crime. So the kid is like a, a little, you know, Mickey Rooney's like a little wannabe gangster. He's a little tough guy. And all the boys at Boys Town are nice and polished and, and well-behaved, but tough too, if they need to be. And so Mickey Rooney has to try to, you know, come in and show off a little bit and be a, bu be a bully until he softens for multiple different reasons. And it ends great. It's a fantastic movie. It's a great movie. What I love about this, though, is the, the style of acting and the style of speech. You know, you know the speech of the 30s. You know what I'm talking about. The, yeah, see, you know, hey, I'm going to come over there and give you a crack in the head. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I love that. And nothing about it bothers me. Nothing about it gives me an, uh, uh, an ill feeling. Nothing about it is, is you know, s screaming agendas in your face or anti-agendas or anything. It's just, it's just art. It's what? just, it's art. It's just a movie. It's just good, innocent, sit down on a Sunday. I sit down here. I turn the lights off. I put the owl lamp on. I get under the blanket and I just watch a 1930s Spencer Tracy movie on a 25 inch Zenith system three. And it's a great day. Uh, the one that's currently in there now is the Oklahoma kid, 1939 with James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. Now, when you watch these old movies, you start to learn things that you didn't know. I never knew that Humphrey Bogart did anything else other than leading man stuff, Casablanca. I, but in all of these movies, the Roaring Twenties I'm going to watch, Humphrey Bogart is a co-star. You know, sometimes he's a, a small character. And I always, when, when I think of Humphrey Bogart, I'm like, no, that's Jack Nicholson. You know, he can't be anything but the lead. Not true. James Cagney is the lead in this. Uh, and it's great. 
It's absolutely great. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I watched a movie called uh, Angels with Dirty Faces that was also about kids, um, little mobster kids, and uh, uh, James Cagney is in that also. And that's fantastic. Anyway, The Oklahoma Kid, um, more of a Western, more of a Western. Uh, but again, I, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, give you the rundown of all these movies. I'm just letting you know that movie interests are shifting as I see some of these older movies. They're, they're so much more enjoyable. I suggest you check some of them out if you can. The ones I'm watching are great. Boys Town is great. Angels with Dirty Faces is great. And The Oklahoma Kid is great. And you get to see actors that we really only heard about. You know, I look forward to seeing, you know, uh, you know, some Bing Crosby uh, movies, some Danny Kaye movies, uh, Lauren Bacall. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing some of these older actors that, you know, kind of um, piloted Hollywood, I guess, for us. So that's that. Movies I've never seen before now. Top Gun, you should check it out. If you haven't already seen Top Gun... You should get yourself a copy. Maybe we'll see you later today with some Nintendo. That is all. Good night now.